Who's going to stay on the game? Uh, yeah, if it's possible. Yeah? I mean, would it stay on? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of contact in the game, man. I don't know. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is E. I'm a professional sports videographer and today I want to show you exactly how to produce great mic'd up videos just like the pros. Hey, good lane, boys, good lane. Great tip, Paris. great tip. When producing a mic'd up video, you have to be able to compromise because every piece of gear you use and everything you do with it becomes a choice between audio quality and safety. Safety for the player, of course, but also safety for your equipment. Because the last thing you want is to break your microphone because you've put it in the wrong spot or you didn't secure it well enough. Bro? Jesus Christ. That's 70 bucks, bro. Jesus Christ. Jesus, and niggas swear they don't be foul, and he ripped the whole shit off. So today I'm gonna show you all the gear that I recommend and explain exactly how to install it on an athlete. So first off, all you need is a wireless microphone kit. A very popular one at the moment is the Rode Wireless Go or Go 2. But personally, I recommend a new DJI mic because it is smaller and easier to fit. Um, well, I'll explain a bit later where it needs to fit, but the smaller, the better, basically. Which is also why a much more professional, but also much bigger option like this one, for example, wouldn't work. Another reason why I prefer the DJI is because you can control every function of the transmitter from the receiver. So once you've installed everything and the athlete is doing his thing, you can start and stop the recording as well as change any settings on the transmitter from the receiver, which is something you cannot do with the Rode microphone or even the Sennheiser for that matter. By the way, I'll talk about the settings in greater detail a bit later on, but I just wanted to put it out there that the fact that you can adjust them on the fly is extremely helpful. Next, you need a lavalier microphone. For the purpose of this video, I'm using a Rode lavalier mic, but I'm not necessarily saying that this is the one for you. Lav mics can cost anywhere from 20 to hundreds of dollars. So again, I'll explain in a minute why and how you should pick the right one for you. Another thing you'll need is a little dead cat for your lav mic, which is very cheap and easy to find on Amazon. And lastly, you'll need one of these. This is technically a vest, but it looks much more like a unisex sports bra, if you ask me. Its original purpose is to hold a GPS tracker because in the last few years, a lot of professional teams started to put GPS on players to track how much running they actually do, what speed they get up to, that sort of thing. So after seeing so many GPS trackers attached either inside the player's jerseys or in like sports bras like these, um, it sort of dawned on me that this little pocket right here is the perfect place to put a wireless microphone transmitter. Because it is extremely secure and there's absolutely no chance for the transmitter to fall out of the pocket. Also, it protects the transmitter from sweat, which is important because if you were to sweat on the transmitter all day, you would eventually damage or break it. And lastly, the vest also protects the transmitter from impacts because this spot right here is probably the safest spot on your body impact-wise. So it is a very safe place for what is by far the most expensive part of your mic top kit, which is why this vest is so important. And when I say this vest, I'm not necessarily endorsing this brand. I mean, the SPT vest worked perfectly for me. Um, I've got it for 50 Australian dollars at JB Hi-Fi, which is basically the Australian version of a Best Buy. But um, yeah, I haven't tried any other ones, so I wouldn't be able to tell you if they're better or worse than this one. By the way, on my kit.co page, I've created a mic tub video kit, which is full of gear that I recommend for a great mic tub video setup. So everything I'm talking about here today is going to be in that kit. And of course, I added the link in the description below. And there were sports bra before. <laughs> so setting up everything is pretty easy. The transmitter goes in the pocket and it's connected to the lav mic clipped to the front of the vest. That's pretty much it. All that's left to do is secure the cable underneath the vest so it doesn't dangle or get in the way and put all the extra inside the pocket with the transmitter. You also need to add a dead cat on the lavalier to avoid any friction noise because there's obviously going to be a lot of friction on the jersey throughout the game. 
For maximum security though, uh, don't do what I'm doing right now on your screen. I definitely recommend putting the microphone inside the vest and not outside. That way it's pretty much impossible for anyone to snatch it off somehow. It will get very sweaty though, which is another reason why the dead cat is so important because it's gonna protect your lav mic from all that sweat. And usually when you buy these things, they come in a pack of like five. So at the end of the game, if you find it a bit disgusting, you can just throw it out and use another one next time. But to be fully honest, the lavalier mic will still be exposed to potential sweat or impact damage, especially in contact sports, which is why I don't recommend using an expensive one. I think you should use a budget friendly lav mic that won't break your heart if it stops working. So in my mic up video kit I mentioned earlier, I've put a few budget lav mic options in there from 20 to 100 bucks that I recommend because the audio quality is more than good enough for what we're trying to achieve. Again, it's all about the balance between quality and safety. In this case, the safety of your wallet. So make sure you click on the link in the description to see my recommendations. But one thing to be mindful of when buying a lav mic though, is that some have TRS connectors with two stripes and some have TRRS connectors with three stripes. Both options will work with the DJI mic, but only the TRS connectors work with the Rode Wireless Go kits. Anyway, at this point, I think it's time to show you what my mic up video kit actually sounds like in a real life scenario. And after that, I'll talk about the settings. I'm not catching fades anymore. Gotta keep my hands clean when they come for the bar. Keep it smooth like a dawn, making moves in the dark. Cause I learned how to swim in the pool for the sharks. Now they coaches, cause they can't read all his motions. How the kid never switch codes, but he codes with his focus. Staring down your team with a frozen, ice cold look that can end the summer solstice. Go, Josh, go through, Josh. Come on, man. Hit that. Yes, sir. Let's go. Settings wise, the main thing you need to be mindful of is your gain, because the most common mistake I see in mic'd up videos is people setting up their input levels just by having like a normal conversation with their uh, subject while the mic is on, and then they think they're fine, but the game starts, the voice goes up because there's a lot of yelling and even the normal communication, everybody's far apart. There's a lot of noise, there's a lot going on. So yeah, the voice goes way up. And if you haven't prepared for it, that's why you'll see often in mic'd up videos, you'll hear a lot of audio clipping. So for that reason, I always recommend setting up your input levels while your subject is talking with their loudest voice, almost screaming at someone uh, across the room, ideally. And also, just to be clear, um, I'm talking about the transmitter's input levels, not the receivers and not the cameras. Because if it clips in here, there's nothing you can do about it there. The damage is already done. But like I said earlier, on the DJI mic, you can control the transmitter input levels from the receiver, and that's a very helpful feature for this situation. Not only that, but when recording in mono, you can also record a safety track. A safety track is basically a copy of your main track, but recorded at a lower volume, which is another very helpful feature when recording a mic'd up video. So there you go, I hope this was helpful. And as you can probably notice by now, I'm a big fan of the DJI mic. So if you wanna watch the full review video I made about it recently, just click on the thumbnail on your screen right now and I will see you there.